Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I make my gochujang burgers. Now, I already have some, uh, some meat made, I made it earlier. Now this meat, when you're making these burgers, it's best that the meat is cooled off. Mine's a little warm because I'm running out of time, but I'm going to cut it up anyhow, and I'm going to put uh, this meat into my food processor, and I'm going to chop it up a little you don't want it super fine but you want to have some little bits in it so uh, basically I want slices about five slices the length of my hand so I'm gonna go down this way and I'm gonna work with that so I'm gonna start cutting this up I'm just gonna put it right onto my cutting board like I said this is still look at the color that came out of the meat okay so I'm going to just cut it up and I have one, two, three, four, and five. This will do it. So here is my meat. I'm going to put this back in the container. And... That's going to be great in sandwiches. I'm going to take this and put it right into the food processor. There we go. Looks like real meat, huh? Here it is. And I'm going to pulse it. And I'll show you what size bits I'm looking for. And there is... Some are bigger, some are smaller, but that's what you're looking for. Now we're going to take this and put it into a bowl. Now you're probably wondering why you're using always the red meat. Well, I'm using the red meat because I'm getting all those added nutrients in my, in my dish. So I'm just going to put this right. I'm making a small amount. Here we go. Now I'm going to take a medium sized onion and I'm going to put it in my food processor and I'm going to chop that up. There's my onions and I'm going to add that to my mixture. Again, if you want, if you don't have a food processor, you can actually do all of this by hand. It's just going to take you a little longer to do it. My God, this onion is making me cry. Okay, so here we go. Mix it up. So we're going to put, uh, let me get some herbs. Okay, I'm going to eyeball this because my measuring spoons are, uh, they're dirty. They're in the sink. So I'm going to put salt and pepper. Okay, so I'm going to put one, two large pinches of, of pepper, and I am going to put, i say about a teaspoon of salt. I feel like I'm blinded by the light here. Okay, I need a teaspoon of coriander. So I'm just going to pretty much eyeball this. Yeah, about a teaspoon of coriander. I need some flax seeds. We want to put the milled, the milled flax, and we want two tablespoons of that. Again, I'm eyeballing this because I've already created this a long time ago, this recipe, but you measure it with your measuring spoon and you're going to get the right, the right portions that you need. And we need some five spice. Now, like I said, if you don't like the five spice guys, don't do it. But we don't mind. So I am going to put about, I'd say, a half to a teaspoon of five spice. Let's just mix this up. Now, chili depends how hot you want it. If you're feeding kids... I would say probably hold on to the five spice. Don't put that much five spice in and don't put any chili. So we don't mind the heat. 
looking here we go mmm I wish you could smell this best part about vegan food is you could actually taste it my god it's so good okay normally I would put tomato paste I don't have any tomato paste so I'm gonna replace this recipe with ketchup but if you're gonna do it I'd say put the tomato paste in and I'm gonna put one two tablespoons of ketchup like I said if you're gonna do it at home do it according to my original recipe and that is using tomato paste if you don't have tomato paste I'll well, do what I'm doing now just add some um, some ketchup to your recipe and now we're gonna need flour because we need to bind all of this together if we don't put flour this is not gonna hold together so you will be using some flour now someone's gonna say well can I use gluten-free flour while well, you're using gluten using gluten-free flour really is going against what you really want to eat so if you want to make these you need to put the flour so I'll be right back and we're gonna start off with half a cup let me just mix that up okay and we're gonna put the other half so we've got one cup of flour If you find your mixer is too dry because you put way too much, because every slice is different, right guys? So if you find that you're, um, you're too dry, then just add uh, some more ketchup to soften it up for yourself. Just by adding a little extra ketchup, you'll be fine. There. Now you can use your hands. Here, but if you don't want to use all flour you can use some flour and some maybe oat uh, some uh, oat flour okay there we go just a little bit of olive oil and there is our recipe maybe a little extra flour so play by ear, my original recipe was one and a half cup of flour, but you have to see. If you find that your dough is too wet, add more flour or more, like I said, oat flour if you want to, but you do need to be able to work with this. Okay, let me just wash my hands. Okay, so now it's up to you how you want to do this. You can either cook them ahead of time and then put them in the fridge cooked or you can uh, put them in the fridge already divided into burger shapes and then you can uh, cook them when you need. But what I do to make life easy, I semi-cook them and then I refrigerate them so when I want to heat them up, I just do the rest of the cooking in, uh, in the oven and you've got your burgers ready but you can uh, you can cook them if you want ahead of time okay I'm gonna use my pizza tray there we go And this is going to be our burgers. Now we can just lightly grease this. Let me just give it a fast shot. There we go. And there's our beautiful burgers. These are to die for. They're really, really good. Now these go in a 375 preheated oven. Another burger. And this is using five slices of my seitan meat and was basically the length of my hand. So plate by ear. 
And again, if you don't want to use those measurements, whatever amount meat you take, then just when you're adding your flour, play around with that until you get you get the texture that you're looking for. Remember you want it that it holds up together. There we go. If you grease your hands, it's just easier to, or if you dip it in some water. And these are gonna go into the oven, 375, 25 to 30 minutes, but you're gonna play, you know, you're gonna flip halfway through, you're gonna flip them over, and you're gonna cook the other side, and then we're gonna dress up the burgers. So I'll be back in a minute, and I'm gonna show you what they look like. Okay, at this point, if you want, you could even add some of my, um, my beef flavoring, if you want, right on top. I'm gonna to do some with and some without, and this way, I get to see which ones I prefer. There we go. And then we're gonna cook these up. 375, between 25 to 30 minutes. You gotta check your oven, not every oven is the same. And then I'm gonna show you how I dress these burgers. And I'm gonna be making a gochujang uh, mayo and with some cilantro and these are going to be just delicious so i'll see you in a little bit okay so you're going to need some gochujang paste i just want this to stop moving you're going to need some gochujang paste and a little vessel to put some mayo in so I'm gonna put one two three for now because I also add some plain mayo on top and we're going to use some paste. Now this depends on you how much of it you want to use. So we're just going to mix this up and that's going to be our gochujang mayo. And basically, this is a fermented um, chili paste. Wow, guys. This is just something else. Now, again, like I said, this is up to you. Uh, if you want it, uh, more gochujang or if you want uh, less of it. Okay, so I'm putting just... Sorry for the shaky, guys. I'm going to put just a little extra. And this, I'm going to put it aside in the refrigerator for when we need it. Erica, you want to just see if it's good for you like this? Mm -hmm. Want to come and see if your gochujang mayo is okay for you? Mm. Good? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. That's delicious. So this is going to go into the refrigerator and we're going to use it. That's really good. We're going to use it when we're dressing up our burgers. So I'm just going to cover that. So that's how easy that is. Now, I didn't have any more of my mayo, so I bought some. My husband brought home Hellman's Vegan Mayo. I think this sits on a shelf rather than the refrigerator. But once you open it up, you do have to refrigerate it. And it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Not as good as mine, but it's pretty good. But if you want, you could already make this. Make your own, prepare it, and just have it in the fridge. When you need it, you could put this, put this stuff on anything. It's so good. Plus, because it's fermented, you've got that added benefit that's good for your belly. So don't be afraid, guys. And this stuff... This lasts forever in the fridge. Anything fermented never really spoils. It just gets better and better as it sits in the fridge. So this, you will have to pick it up at an Asian grocery store. They have it for sure. Most Asian grocery stores will have the gochujang fermented uh, hot peppers. So go ahead and pick one of these up and keep it in the fridge. It's going to last you till you're old and gray. And this one here, I'm going to cover... And I'll have it ready for dressing of the dressing of my burgers. Okay. Good? Good. Delicious. That's really good. Very, very good. I'm excited. Here we go. Into the fridge it goes. We're going to start off with the bun. 
There we go. Ready, guys? Okay, we're gonna put some gochujang. I'm gonna put one burger. Do you need lettuce? Cilantro, no. Okay, very simple guys. Nothing complicated about this burger. Look how beautiful this avocado is. Am I messy or what? Okay, we got some avocado. We're gonna put some of my cheese. This is raw cheese. You guys wanna try some of my beautiful raw cheese? I have a few up. There we go. Just gonna put a little bit of just plain mayo. And some beautiful, beautiful sprouts, guys. And there is your gochujang burger. There you go. So, I hope you like this recipe, guys. And if you do, come back. Let me know how you like it. And I'll see you in my next video.